When you evaluate dietary fiber critically, you begin to realize that it is totally essential for good health. We haven't always known this, but now we know it. We have discovered that in the last 30, 40 years, partly initiated by Dr. Dennis and his discovery of transit time, how long it takes for food to get from the intake to the exit, right? Yes, that was a discovery of fiber and its importance. People sometimes ask me, there cannot be something that is only good, that is making the great in every situation. Isn't there anything adversive about fiber? Oh yes, there is. There is something that we should talk about. Nobody really wants to talk about it, but sometimes people come to me and they say, listen, isn't there something antisocial about eating all this fiber? Antisocial? Ah, gas gas. Nobody talks about it. We just sort of, we're silent about it, but we feel very embarrassed when it happens. And there's lots of gas when it comes to eating fiber, especially when you go from a low fiber diet, which is common in Western society, and you then enrich your diet with a lot of fiber. You do it too quickly, too fast, and everybody will know about it. Yeah, everybody in your environment will know about it because you have this eruption of gas. When we do this in our CHIP program in our comprehensive health improvement program where we have some 85,000 participants. They always tell us after about 10 days, I mean, I can just look at the audience and I can see they are sort of sitting like on a volcano any moment to erupt and then they try to suppress it. Yeah, that's what it happens. This is what happens. But then we usually make sure at that time we tell our participants, please, from now on, always walk outdoors. Well, but actually I have some good news for you. This takes about three to four weeks. It's an adjustment phase. There's nothing wrong with the fiber itself, but because the fiber comes in so suddenly and you've been on a low fiber diet before, now there's an adjustment, there's a rumbling there, you know something is happening, but in three, four weeks, the body has adjusted and everything is just fine and you'll be okay. Well, we don't really know exactly how it works, but we're thinking that it probably works like this. When you have the typical high fat, low fiber diet, that we're used to, and then you change towards a low-fat, high-fiber diet, you kind of set up in the colon some kind of a civil war. Yeah, that's right. There are different kinds of bacteria that are being promoted by these two different kinds of dietary approaches. You have some bacteria that are responding to a high-fat, low-fiber diet, and you have another kind of bacteria that is responding to a low-fat, high-fiber diet. Now, you see, if you have been on a high-fat, low-fiber diet, then you have a certain kind of bacteria that that is taking care of the colonic space. They live there, that's their residence, they feel very comfortable, they feel uh, being fed, everything is being taken care of for these bacteria. And then you change the diet and the other bacteria is now being thriving. This other bacteria is now multiplying and all of a sudden both parties begin to realize that this is a, a civil war. We're fighting for our domicile, we're fighting for our residence. There's only room for one kind of bacteria. And what happens? Civil war and they're going to war and they're pulling out their muskets, they're pulling out their guns. And as they begin to shoot, you begin to smell the gunpowder. Yeah, we noticed. But you know, once the war is over, it takes about two, three, four weeks. Once the war is over, there's no more shooting. There's no more gunpowder smell and everything calms down. Everything is passing. Everything is fine. So Dr. Burkett, this wonderful man that I had the privilege of working with, the man that was a discoverer of the Burkett lymphoma in Africa, the man that made the observation of uh, different stool sizes, and then that led to ultimately the concept of transit time, how long it would take food to go from the intake to the exit. You know, this man that was then spearheading the whole discovery of dietary fiber and its physiological factors, this man was a very colorful speaker. He would always finish his lecture on fiber by saying, ladies and gentlemen, please note, the smaller the stool, the larger the hospitals. And the larger the stool, the smaller the hospitals. There's a direct relationship between health and food. And then he always recommended to his audiences. And here's my final recommendation. Have a majestic, large stool. Be well.